and you will be good to go. Okay, I've got the rear wheel here. I've got it mounted in a vise, as you can see. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do is take off the brake arm. The brake arm is secured by a, um, a locking nut, and it's kind of hard to get off. I use this uh, cheater pipe here and my 17 millimeter wrench. I hold the, uh, the cheater pipe onto the brake arm, and then I hit it with a, uh, with a hammer to uh, bust it loose. Now, if you don't have a, a, a cheater, a, a pipe available, uh, what you can do, an option is uh, get a, 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 a wrench firmly secured onto the, the nut and use a hammer or something to tap the brake arm. Uh, tap the brake arm in a clockwise position. That way you can then, uh, all you really need to do is just break the nut loose. Be sure and remember the, uh, the order everything uh, came off, so you're going to put it back on. Now, here I am uh, showing you where the sprocket is going to mount on this here. The dust cap is going to be an issue. If you just put it together and uh, tighten everything up, your sprocket will, will uh, bind against the dust cap. So we have an option. Either you can drill the hole or dremel it and make it larger, or we can shave off some of the, uh, the outer part of the dust cap. And here is how your sprocket will line up. There's a flange on the hub that uh, pretty much mates even with the inside of the sprocket. Uh, if we were to run without the dust cap, that's a possibility. Uh, you can go ahead and tighten it up to there. But I prefer to leave uh, and have some of the protection the dust cap offers. Like I said, all we got to do is grind just a little bit off of either the sprocket or the dust cap. I prefer the dust cap. Okay, here is a little jig that I use to hold the dust cap. Uh, it, it clamps down on the dust cap. You want to get it centered. It's basically just a long threaded bolt with a, two nuts. So I put one nut on it. I put a washer. I then put the dust cap, another washer, and then another nut, tighten it up, get it nice and secure, make sure the dust cap is centered on it. This will give you a, a good foundation for holding the dust cap when you hit it on the grinder. Now you want to be very careful doing this. There's a chance this thing could go flying off. I've done about a thousand of them, so uh, I'm taking a little bit of a risk here without using a face shield, but hey. Okay, so you want to grind it down enough. You want to make sure that you get it uh, good and perfectly round uh, with relation to the center. And it, uh, all it needs to do is fit into the hole of the sprocket. We're good to go. Fish out your two rubber pieces that are in the rag joint kit. You're going to need nine bolts, nine nylock nuts, nine flat washers, and nine lock washers. You're going to need a 10 millimeter wrench, and I like to use a 10 millimeter socket on a quarter inch ratchet. You're going to cut one of the rubber pieces here and you want to cut it between the bolt holes to where you're, you're, you're not uh, cutting it where the bolt hole is. You don't want to do that. Cut it between two of the bolt holes. Fit it into the hub like you see there. Now what we're going to do here, you want to start putting the bolts through the sprocket and you can see the sprocket is dished outward. That's going to give us uh, extra room for the chain. So uh, be sure and make note of how you do that. Uh, particularly if you got the 2.125 inch tires here. And here you see me, I've got the sprocket, the rubber piece, the spokes, and then the, in, the inside rubber piece, and then we have the metal backing plate. And then you have the hard task of fishing your hardware through to the inside of the, uh, the hub, and you kind of have to fight the spokes. So hold everything together the best you can, put a flat washer, then a lock washer, then go ahead and feed on your nylock nut. Here you go, you can see a little bit more detail of what we're doing here. Uh, some of the kits come with three backing plates and some come with two of them. The trick here to get the, uh, the hardware on is to go ahead and get your fingers around the spokes and then pass through from the sprocket side. That way you can get a hold on it and put it onto the bolts. Just take your time. All you really want to do at this point here is just get your flat washer, lock washer, and just get the nut started. That's all you want to do at this point here. Then we'll, we'll go ahead and get everything aligned properly and, and then start tightening it up here. So get all nine bolts through. 
Now what we can do here, once you get the, uh, the bolts through and get the nuts on, you want to make sure that you have your sprocket centered over the hole here. And if you've uh, shaved your dust cap down properly, that as well will be a tool that can guide you as we get further along in the process. So I back up the inside, the nut, with the wrench and I use the ratchet on the outside. You want to give each of the, uh, the bolts about maybe, I give it about maybe eight quick twists with my ratchet. What that'll do is get about maybe three threads through the back of the, uh, the, the nut there. Do it, all, do it evenly all the way around. You don't want to start really tightening it up at this point here. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tighten one here that's in the middle of one of my backing plates. I'm going to skip two. I'm going to tighten that next one there. Then I'm going to skip two and tighten up the next one. That way I'm only tightening up three bolts evenly spaced across and start tightening those. Give those about maybe ten quick flips with uh, your, uh, your uh, ratchet and then you go back and you get the ones that are between those three. That way you can begin to slowly bring the sprocket in and bring it in evenly. After you go around each time, check, make sure that your sprocket is still centered. Now you can see I'm pushing the dust cap on there and the dust cap as well as I'm using that as a guide to let me know uh, that I'm uh, that I'm centered on it and uh, I hope as well that you ground your dust cap off evenly that way it'll be useful as a tool to help you in aligning things go all the way around one time what we're going to do here we're not going to tighten this all up in one shot like I said maybe 10 quick flips with the ratchet backing it up work your way around uh, doing the three equally distant bolts then go back and get the two between each of the three, as it were, and slowly tighten it up. Check your work as you go. That way, if your sprocket starts to get pulled off center, you can then go back and uh, e it's a little bit easier to uh, get things aligned back up. The three brackets first. I just count the number of turns. One, two, three, four, five. Then I go to the next bracket. One, two, three, four, five. Count two over. One, two, three, four, five. We're still centered. So then I'll do five all the way around on the ones that I didn't get. Okay, so I've got each, I've got them all about the same tightness. They're fairly well snugged down. You can see that I've got, I've got them fairly well tightened up here. Let's go ahead and get the dust cap on. The brake arm on. Push your brake arm on, test it, make sure the brake arm rotates around. Now before we go ahead and cinch this up here, I'm going to go ahead and grease the bearings. And what we're going to do, we're going to take a 17 millimeter wrench, we're going to go here on the back side here and we're going to back it up here. Then I've got the the brake actuator here and I'm just going to loosen it up and at this point here I can just screw the shaft the axle th through here and you can see I've got it exposed here got some grease I pull out the bearing and I want to put some extra grease there on the bearing Now the sprocket, if you turn it counterclockwise, it'll come out and we can see the bearing in there, the larger bearing, and it doesn't have that much grease on it. Now I'm going to hold on to the to this piece here, it makes it a lot easier if you push it out your two uh, brake cam pieces will come out and you'll have to it'll be a little bit harder here so I'm going to screw in clockwise on the sprocket then what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully push this out what I don't want to do is turn this brake piece here just push it straight out 
And I've got a decent amount of grease on the bearing. So it's best to it's best to check it whenever you get a new bike or even an old one for motorized use. Now I turned this piece here. I did what I said you shouldn't do, but now I've got it lined up. We'll get some excess grease out here. Okay, now I'm going to hold this here and I'm going to screw in on the axle until I get it snug. And I can feel it starting to take up there and I've got it snug. I've got it to where I felt it just stopped. And then you want to check and see if you have any wiggle here at all. And what I can do is take my 17 millimeter wrench, back up the, the, the back side here, and then take the brake arm and snug it I mean, just a little bit here. If I get it too tight, it's not going to want to spin easily. And as you tighten things up, you're going to want to check it again and again. And we're, we're, we're snugged up there. We're good to go. Now let's go ahead and get our dust cap on. Get our washer on. Got the, the thicker nut. I'm going to back it up with my uh, pipe or tubing here. I've got that cinched down. Now we're going to check it again. There's no play. And it moves around here. Double check it. There's just a little bit of play in it, so I'm going to hold the brake arm here. And I'm going to put my wrench on the back side and tighten it up a little bit. And when I did that, I, I, and as well, when you put it on the bike, you want to double check that you've got everything uh, snugged up and you don't have any play in your bearings here. And we're good to go. Now we need to check and uh, spin the wheel and see that we don't have any run out, any too much side to side play on the uh, on the sprocket. You can do it on the bike. I, I did it on the bike for a long time, but I've I've got it snugged up to where there's no play in the wheel. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to spin it. Okay, and you can see we've got a bit of play on this here. And what I'll do is I'll put a screwdriver, you can use a piece of paper or something, something that's not going to give, and you get it to where it just rubs on the high spot. So right there we're rubbing, right there we have a gap. So where it's starting to rub, that's what I'm going to call the high side, that's where it, it, it's, it's out this way here. What we need to do is we need to push it in that way. And we can't have the the side to side play of this sprocket be any wider than the width of the inside of the chain. So you've got about maybe uh, about maybe an eighth to a, a quarter of an inch play there. Maximum. Any more than that, you're 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 gonna have problems. I'd say about an eighth of an inch is about all you're gonna get away with. So here we're starting to rub, now we're not rubbing, rubbing, and now it's working away. So I've got one, two, three spokes. Where three spokes intersect, I need to tighten this up. 
So basically it's out for three spokes. Okay, so I've tightened it up a little bit. Let's go ahead, put the screwdriver back. We're rubbing, got a gap. There's my maximum gap there. Okay, so there's my maximum gap there. We still need to uh, tighten it up more. We're rubbing. There's our maximum gap. There, so I've got one intersection, two intersection, three intersections here. So from this one here, this one, and this one here, it's lifted out. So I'm going to tighten it up a little bit more. I can tell that one needed tightening up. And we got that. So let's go ahead and see what we got. Let's see, I'm going to get it even closer if I can. All right, so we're rubbing here still. I have pretty much exhausted my options, but one option I do have is a hammer. And I don't recommend doing it all the time, but yes, you can do that. So it's rubbing, we have a gap, starting to rub again. So I've identified my high spot here, and right in the middle of it, I'm going to give it a nice little tap. Let's put our edge against it. We've got... rubbing now it's not there's my maximum gap and my maximum gap is about one-eighth of an inch we're good to go let's